This is part one, where we introduce organizational culture. The topics for our few recordings on culture will include number one, to describe what organizational culture is and why it's important. Why do we care about culture? Number two, understand the dimensions that make up culture, right? So the different facets, levels, or dimensions that then makes one coherent culture. Then we're going to talk about how do you actually create culture and how do you maintain it if you want to maintain it. And if you don't want to maintain it in number four, we are going to talk about cultural change. And then lastly, as we always do in this textbook, is to talk about how you can make use of cultural management skills for yourself. So on the right side of this slide, I grabbed a definition page of culture from Blue Beyond Consulting. They have their little URL there if you want to visit them. And as I just thought it was a nice graphic to introduce what culture is. And as you see in the middle here, it talks about what makes us us. So culture really is all about the way we do things here, the identity we have as an organization. And so some of the things that Blue Beyond Consulting think uh, makes their col culture their actual cultures are illustrated in the little graphics that sit around this circle, right? So our culture is grounded in a commitment that has a shared purpose, values, mindsets, and behaviors, right? So it's shared, meaning people share the values, they share the purpose, they share mindset and behavior. So they have similar mindsets and similar behaviors. It's exemplified and amplified by the words and the deeds of the leaders. So the organizational leaders really have to show up and talk about what makes us us and show the employees what makes us us. It should be visible in the relationships that we have in the organization as well as external to the organization. So with our stakeholders, our colleagues, our customers, the community, our vendors, etc. It should also be visible in the architecture of the organization, our formal, formal and informal practices and processes. Do our values show up in our performance evaluation system? Do our values show up in our hiring system, right? Are we looking for the skills and competencies that we say is our organization? And then how do we talk about it? So is our culture evident in our rituals, in our stories, in our folklore, in, in our aspiration, in our practice day to day? So that's really a nice overview and introduction into organizational culture. And when we talk about the planning, organizing, leading, controlling framework, which is our red thread throughout this textbook, we find that organizational design and culture sit together up under organizing. So culture is sort of the informal design of you will, if you will. The organization design is the formal structure for how relationships should occur in the organization. Who reports to who? Who is the boss of what direct reports? That sits in the organizational design formally. We can say that informally, the culture is the same thing. The culture is about the relationships we have, how we interact with each other, etc. So it's the informal component in that organizing piece. So here is our formal definition. You see it on the left side in orange. So organizational culture is it's a system of shared assumptions, values, and beliefs that indicate appropriate and inappropriate behavior within our organization. So 
It's a system, meaning it covers a lot of things, like we already talked about, practices, policies, values, goals. They are shared, meaning the employees in the organization all share the same, right? And it's not exactly 100% or one-to-one -one ratio. We don't exactly share the same, but very similar, right? We have a similar or a shared understanding of the assumptions, of the values, of the beliefs. And from that system, we know what we're supposed to do, right? It indicates our appropriate and inappropriate behaviors. So we learn really quickly by looking around. Are people coming late in the morning? How do they talk to their customers, etc.? So we learn from the culture how to behave within the organization. And we care about culture because if we have a great culture, it's really a strong asset to us. It gives us this informal control system, right? That we just talked about that dictates how we should behave in an organization. And if your culture encourages high levels of performance, high levels of uh, quality interactions, responsiveness to customers, etc. That's a great asset. However, it can also be a large liability if you have an organizational culture that is one of low performance, that is one of not caring, of not being compassionate, not being responsive. And then it's really a liability because culture is tremendously difficult to change. As I already talked about, it acts as a control mechanism, meaning it dictates behaviors and as such it controls, even though the, the managers do not have to be there to do the controlling, which makes it quite effective. And we know from studies that have been done that it, when we have shared values or shared culture, we might also have a greater level of performance of the organization, right? So what is an effective culture? An effective culture is one that lets you have high level of performance within your industry for your organization. Also, culture is very difficult for competitors to imitate. So if you, like Southwest, have it figured out with your culture, you might have a competitive advantage that uh, United and American Airlines cannot compete with. And they didn't. They tried. All right. So we also have three levels of organizational culture. And so this came out of the thinking and writing of Sheen. And Sheen indicated that we have at the very bottom level, we have something called assumptions. So assumptions are the things that are taken for granted. They are reflected in our sort of subconscious thinking or non-thinking existence. These are the things we actually think or the things that we act upon without thinking. So these are the actual deep down assumptions that we have about how we behave and how we communicate in this organization. They are not visible. The values are the things that are communicated at the conscious level. So our values are stated in our vision statement, in our mission statement, in our strategic plan, in our goals, in our values. These are the things that our organizational leaders will get up and talk about and maybe also enact. They will behaviorally show these values. And then lastly, we have something called artifacts, which are the things that are truly visible. This is the office design. This is the brand logo. This is the happy hours that you have. These are the paintings on the wall or no paintings. This is the body language that people show up with. The things that are visible to us, they exist on the surface 
and we can also see them and hear them. Those are the artifacts. So that's typically when we talk about organizational culture, we typically talk about the artifacts and sometimes also we talk about the values. Typically when we talk about organizational culture, the assumptions really don't make it into that conversation. But as you have already figured out by now, these assumptions drive a lot of the behavior. And so if we have a situation where these assumptions are not aligned with the values and the artifacts, we are in a really tricky situation because now our employees might become cynical, right? Because leadership says one thing and then they do another thing. However, if the assumptions, values and artifacts all line up perfectly together, then we have a great situation where people believe what leadership says and they believe what leadership does. And now we should have a more effective culture. And that brings us lastly to our discussion slide. And our discussion questions for this little bit is, number one, why do companies need culture? Number two, give an example of a company culture being a strength as well as a weakness. Number three, in what ways does culture serve as a controlling mechanism? Number four, if assumptions are below the surface, why do they matter? Number five, share examples of artifacts that you have noticed at different organizations. So with that, we're closing part one of organizational culture, chapter eight. And go ahead and answer these questions for yourself. You can also head over to our discussion board.